Today, I'm talking about eight of the most common mistakes I see people make when they're using meta ads to promote their digital music on Spotify that absolutely ruin your chance of success at digital marketing. You might be making some of these mistakes right now and not even know it. What's up everyone? My name is Kyle and I'm the founder of Kyle the Ally a new type of digital marketing agency that aims to help small musicians and independent record labels use meta ads and other digital marketing tools to get their music discovered. So let's get into the list. Starting at the top of our list at number eight, if you are using audience network, you need to stop right now. And if you're new to the meta ads game, you might not even know what Audience Network is. And Meta doesn't even make it very clear in their own description what the heck Audience Network actually is. Let's back up for a moment. As you may or may not already know, when you create a Meta ad, you have a choice of where in the Meta ecosystem your ad will be shown. These are called placements, and they include some of the more well-known parts of the ecosystem like Facebook and Instagram. You can also choose Messenger, which is usually a smaller part of the equation. And the fourth main arena is called Audience Network. Audience Network is basically a loose conglomeration of apps and services that Meta has some influence over or maybe they partly own. But herein lies the problem because Meta doesn't have the same authority to track the quality of the listener or the engagement that you get on Audience Network as it does on a place like Instagram or Facebook. So what ends up happening is the traffic that you get on your ad from Audience Network is complete crap. What this means in the context of our music ads is that when you run a conversion campaign, which you should be doing by the way, and we'll talk more about that later, Meta is naive. It's just trying to find the cheapest conversions possible. If you have really cheap traffic that is completing the conversion, but not going to the end goal of listening to your song on Spotify, Meta is not gonna know any better. It's just gonna say, hey look, this person clicked on my landing page and did it cheaply, so I should find more of these people. When you run an ad on Audience Network, every single time you try, you end up with a whole bunch of traffic that amounts to cheap conversions, but a very small percentage of these people, if any of them at all, actually listen to your song. So it's a complete waste, ends up optimizing your campaign to shove all of your budget behind Audience Network. If you just naively look at your cost per conversion, you'll say, hey look, this is great, I'm getting cheap conversions. But if you look even one layer deeper, you'll notice that none of them end up converting to listeners on Spotify, which is the whole point of doing this in the first place. I've never run an ad on Audience Network since, and I recommend you throw this one in the bin as well. By default, your meta ad campaign is going to have what's called automatic placements turned on. And no matter how much meta kicks and screams, and insists that leaving the automatic placements on is going to be good for you, for the specific type of music marketing we do, their recommendation is not valid and you should turn off automatic placements, instead select manual placements and specifically turn audience network off and forget about it. Mistake number seven is something I see very often when I'm doing a one hour consultation and that is misunderstanding how to organize the keywords when you're setting up an audience for your meta ad. Now you might notice that in the detailed targeting section, you have a box to type in some interests and there's some lesser obvious buttons, like for example, you can click to find further and another box will open up just under that as well. Now, the way that you organize your keywords in one box versus two boxes and the way you spread them out actually matters in the way your audience is defined and it matters a lot. You might have heard in other videos that I've done that I recommend using Spotify as your first keyword and then one other music interest or it could even be a lifestyle interest, something related to your music that you wanna capture in your audience. Usually the, the basis for your audience is two keywords, Spotify and something else. One of the most common mistakes I see is people will put Spotify and the other interests, like let's say it's indie rock, together in the same box. And this is a problem because any keywords that you put together in the same box get bound together with a logical or statement. What? So what does that mean in non-nerd language? In or statement, that means somebody is matched to your audience when they match the interests Spotify or indie rock. You're basically saying when two keywords are in the same box, your audience member only has to satisfy one of these conditions. The correct way to do this is to click that button where it says define further and it'll open up another box underneath it. Any keywords that are in separate boxes are bound together with a logical and statement. Now, in order to be included in my audience, that person has to match Spotify 
and indie rock. They have to satisfy both conditions and that is a tighter set of conditions that more accurately reflects the audience I'm chasing. An example of when I would put more than one keyword in the same box is, let's say we're targeting you know, a smaller artist or a couple of artists that are very similar. Let's say I'm writing a song for fans of you know, Fall Out Boy. I might put Spotify in the top box, I'll put Fall Out Boy in the second box, so it has to match one or the other, but fans of Fall Out Boy are also usually fans of Panic! at the Disco, so it makes sense to group these together. What this means is that an audience member could match Fall Out Boy or Panic! at the Disco, that's where the logical or comes in, and they must also match Spotify, whether they're a fan of Fall Out Boy and have Spotify, Panic! at the Disco and have Spotify, or they're a fan of both and have Spotify. That's how this audience specification reads and that's the proper way to organize your keywords. Mistake number six is writing boring ad copy to use as the caption on your Instagram or Facebook placements. What do I mean by boring? Well, you have to resist the urge to write something like, hi, my name is Kyle. I have a song out, you should listen to it. Boring. The reason why this doesn't work is because we're promoting your music to strangers. These people don't know you. They don't know who Kyle is, don't know what kind of music he makes, they don't know why they should even care about his song. Write a very short sentence that captures what these people like about this music to draw them in before you ask them to go do something they weren't already thinking about doing. For example, instead of saying, hi, I'm Kyle, I just released a song, I might say something like, these lyrics would make even Pete Wentz blush. And if somebody is into Fall Out Boy, which is the audience that I'm chasing, they're gonna be curious and wanna see how it measures up to the music they already know. You might say something like, this is a song for people who live for the mosh pit. You might even ask a question and say something like, is this what happens if Weezer and Green Day released a collab track? The marketing world, we call this the bridge. It bridges the gap between the audience's attention, where they are right now, and getting them to care about the thing you're asking them to care about, your song. Mistake number five is not using enough different parts of your song to promote your project. Now, if you had to pick 15 seconds out of your whole song to put into an ad, only 15 seconds, one clip, most of you would pick apart from the chorus. It's a natural assumption to think that this is the catchiest, most energetic part of the song. However, I find that seven times out of 10, it's usually a clip from the song's verse, from the instrumental, or even from the bridge that performs better than a clip from the chorus. It's super counterintuitive, and even I don't fully understand why this is the case, but this has been my experience in the many years I've been doing this for my own music and for my clients. The way that you solve this issue is that you choose multiple options. The beauty of meta ads is you don't have to just lock yourself down to one part of the song. You can run a whole bunch of clips in parallel. And so I encourage you to try at least five different parts of your song. Because if you only use one part of the song, you're robbing yourself of opportunity that maybe another part of the song did better. We interrupt this programming to tell you more about what I do as Kyle the Ally. So I started Kyle the Ally with the mission of helping independent artists, small musicians, and indie record labels promote their music using digital marketing and get it heard. I specialize in using the Meta Ads platform to promote digital releases on Spotify or to promote tours when an artist wants to sell tickets to physical shows. I lead a small team of talented individuals who take the time to make sure that your music is represented correctly and that the marketing that we do gives you the best shot at finding the audience you're chasing. If you're interested in learning more about how we can work together, please go to my website, kyletheally.com. Tell us a little bit of information about yourself in the intro questionnaire. And if it looks like working together is a good fit, we'll be in touch with some next steps and we'll see where it goes from there. Now back to your regular scheduled programming. All right, number four is gonna hurt some people. Stop using low effort video creative to promote your song. This one is hard because not all of us have infinite budget and resources to make a sparkling music video, but you need to resist the urge to just film something on your iPhone in crappy lighting with bad presentation on a fisheye lens. If your ad looks like garbage, it's not gonna stand out from the sea of other garbage ads out there. It needs to look colorful, well composed, well lit. I know, easier said than done. And because I don't just preach about these things, I wanna show you examples of ads that I did when I was first starting out that performed really poorly, but you know, they were done kind of lazy. I did them on a phone, they're not shot very well.
these ads did not perform well for me. Later, I started upping my game to put a little bit more effort in. music video that I shot for corporate entertainment ended up being one of my most successful ads ever for promoting my own music. It cost me zero dollars. I just gathered a bunch of friends, we found a super cool venue, put some time into color correcting, and made something that looked nice. The key here is you don't have to spend a ton of money, but you don't want your ad to look like, you know, it was just done lazily on a phone. That's not to say you can't shoot videos on a phone, but that shouldn't be an invitation for you to not put the effort in to make your background appealing and your composition and your lighting and all of these other things that matter when you're trying to stand out among the bajillion other ads that you're competing against. Whether you like it or not, even though we're musicians, video is the way we make a first impression in 2024. I would say that the video that you use as ad creative is the biggest part of determining a campaign success. It is not the only thing that makes a campaign successful, but it is perhaps the most important thing to get right. And if you're gonna spend your time and effort anywhere, I would spend a good chunk of it just on the video. Mistake number three is using traffic campaigns. Guys, why are you still using traffic campaigns? I made another video on my channel earlier that went into detail of an experiment that I tried. So I ran an experiment for myself, a true A-B scientific test, and found that the level of engagement you get from a traffic campaign is just nowhere near as good what you get from a conversion campaign. To make a long story short, the reason behind that is the conversion is Meta's way of measuring whether your ad was successful and keeping track of who's clicking on your ad and doing the thing you want them to do and finding more people who are going to engage in the way that you want them to. If you run a traffic campaign, it's basically just blasting your ads out there with no feedback or any way of knowing whether people are really engaging in the, in the way that you care about or a way that's meaningful. So guys, results don't lie. Please don't use traffic campaigns. You should be using conversion campaigns. And in particular, I prefer to use Hyped It and their conversion event to promote my music and I've also got another video on my channel that explains why. Mistake number two is editing your ads too often or making what I call a destructive edit. When you're running promotions for your music, I get it. Emotions run high. You want this thing to be successful because you've poured so much heart, effort, blood, sweat, money, tears into making this project come to fruition. Now you just want to run the marketing and have it work. So it's tempting to be refreshing the ads manager every 20 seconds, making panic edits when things don't seem to be going your way, but you got to resist the urge to do this because the fact of the matter is that the meta ads manager is a pretty smart platform and it's good at figuring things out if you just give it time to optimize and sort things out as a general rule of thumb i don't make any judgments on performance or any changes to the ads within 48 hours of clicking the publish button and the ads are going live all of the ads go through something called a learning phase which is the first 50 conversions of an ad where the ad is still figuring out who likes your stuff and who doesn't. During this time, the cost per result can fluctuate a whole bunch in either direction. And it's generally advised that you try to minimize the edits that you do to your ads during this point. If you make a destructive edit, that means your ad will be set back to the beginning of learning phase. So this includes things like changing the video, changing the audience targeting, changing the placements. More or less anything you do to the ad will set it back to the beginning of learning and all of the optimization progress you've made, thrown in the garbage, it's gotta start over again. Now, when it does come time to make a change, Another rule of thumb I have is to not make more than one change every 24 hours so you have enough time for the ads to recalibrate and get some data under them. You know, really you should wait a couple days even just to make judgments on performance. Two or three days is usually enough. And finally, we get to mistake number one on my list. And it might sound a little silly or a little trivial to some of you guys, but you will not believe how often I run into this one. That is not choosing a budget for your project. I still believe it's super important for you to choose an exact amount of money, one number to spend before you go into the project because so much of your plan for the campaign 
is going to be based on how much money exactly do you have to spend on this project. It determines things like how much money should you spend per day, how long should you run the campaign for, and what kind of results can you even expect out of your investment. Another mistake that I see in this all the time is a client will come to me and say, my budget is, I don't know, $2,000 to $3,000. That's not a budget. That is a range and that is not super helpful. A budget is one number, one amount of money that you spend. If you want to extend this concept into nerdy details, you can watch another video that I made on this channel where I talk about diminishing returns and the whole idea that doubling the amount of money you spend doesn't necessarily double your results, but that's a topic for another time and you can check that out here. So there you have it guys, that was eight of the most common mistakes I see when I'm helping people run meta ads to promote their music on Spotify. If you learn something new or you passionately disagree with anything that I've said, Ugh. let me know in the comments section below. I love starting discussions. Please subscribe and continue the journey because we're going to be learning lots of new things together. Anyway, my name is Kyle. I want to thank you guys for joining me and I hope to see you in the next video.